international colleagues, you know, re regarding the future um, technologies and uh, that would be important for the next generation um, aircraft. Uh, we've heard some presentations here related to uh, high performance aircraft, military aircraft. Uh, I will basically speak about uh, civil aviation applications. So uh, I will start with um, <coughs> the data we borrowed from the Boeing company. They published the most fresh probably data um, what advances uh, or kind of what uh, uh, major areas where um, Boeing 787 aircraft got improvement uh, uh, due to these systems. And um, here is this uh, breakdown, breakdown of their uh, efficiency improvement and uh, you can see that the most of uh, efficiency in, uh, improvement uh, received due to uh, engine, better engines, some uh, about 25% of their overall efficiency due to better materials and structures, and structure, <coughs> systems, and uh, aerodynamics. Um, again, I will narrow down my presentation. I'll talk more about uh, aerodynamics efficiency. And uh, this is again very recent, uh, the most fresh uh, Russian example, uh, new, newly developed uh, aircraft de under development aircraft MS-21, MC-21, that is a uh, mid-range uh, um, aircraft. Uh, with uh, 150 up to 200 passengers. And you see the work of uh, our aerodynamicists uh, with um, uh, wing prototyping. So if you st uh, look at the start of the process uh, when we just uh, try to uh, suggest some wing design and then next one, next one. So the final design was uh, the wing number 10. So it's really a high uh, aspect ratio wing 11.5 uh, almost extension with a specific um, swept angle uh, for the Mach cruise Mach number 0.8. And uh, it just gives you idea how complicated the process of design is. So it requires a lot of uh, wind tunnel testing and calculations, um, optimization work. And um, that's major thing. But even today, uh, talking about modern configurations, uh, we have to pay attention very tiny things like here. You see the work um, of our scientists and engineers to optimize um, um, engine and wing integration or airframe integration. So today we use a curved pilot that, uh, that is optimal for the specific uh, cruise Mach number conditions. So we can get uh, maybe point, uh, 15, point 0.15, uh, 0.2 lift to drag uh, ratio improvement because of this optimization. So and uh, a lot of other uh, research uh, is important uh, in order to um, improve uh, overall aerodynamic efficiency. Here is um, um, the diagram of um, uh, lift to drag, or actually fuel consumption efficiency improvement uh, for the MS-21 aircraft. Um, it's all together, not only aerodynamic wing, but uh, as I said, a very high extension um, ratio of the wing. It's made of composite, so it's a little slightly a lighter weight. Uh, some other um, improvements, including more electrical aircraft concept, and uh, um, of course, uh, new generation engines, uh, some um, uh, control systems and other systems improvement. Uh, so we introduced the uh, active low load. Uh, uh, active load control system that, that uh, uh, make it possible to, to uh, decrease the peak uh, loads uh, uh, of uh, 
of, for the aircraft during operations. Uh, again, um, uh, we are looking for some other ideas and um, checking other approaches uh, that can um, give additional uh, aerodynamic efficiency to the aircraft. And here you see um, aircraft with so-called lifting body, so it's um, not circular section uh, fuselage, but flat, uh, providing some extra lift. Um, and the configuration with um, a straight wing, actually it's a uh, uh, configuration for the regional aircraft uh, um, configuration, actually, um, and the engine mounted on the top, on the upper surface of the fuselage in order to make a screening, a noise screening effect, and um, other details that uh, really makes uh, this approach uh, quite uh, attractive and uh, due to lifting body we got some uh, um, lift and drag uh, the blue line uh, improvement aerodynamics improvement and other ideas uh, that might be good for the future generation aircraft it's uh, <coughs> engine engines uh, mounted on the upper surface of the wing uh, again, that's wide body aircraft, uh, new generation, I mean, new concept. And uh, due to this upper location of the engine, we can get some uh, so called super circulation effect and again uh, increase uh, uh, lift to drag uh, ratio. Another concept that might be good for the near or far future is so called distri introduction of a distributed. Uh, um, power plant when uh, the engine doesn't have explicit uh, a nozzle but the nozzle is distributed along the uh, airframe so you see it's located in the area of uh, wing and fuselage junction and uh, schematic configuration is shown here again uh, uh, due to such uh, approach we can get a very high bypass uh, ratio but uh, uh, avoid to have a uh, very large uh, scale, large diameter engine with uh, its own problems. I mean, higher drag and uh, other problems. Um, the high diameter engines is uh, harder and harder to mount on their, uh, to integrate in the airframe. Uh, so that might be a good approach uh, for the future. And... Uh, Besides other things, uh, we can uh, with this uh, approach we can uh, get extra uh, shielding effect uh, for the noise. So the future for future generation uh, aircraft, you know, the civil applications, civil aircraft, uh, there are very tough uh, requirements that is uh, tough. Uh, that will be tougher and tougher during the years. So the noise uh, emission, uh, safety, efficiency. That's, uh, that all uh, we need to take into account when we develop new concepts. So due to such an uh, approach with distributed uh, propulsion system, we can get extra 15-20% of fuel consumption uh, saving. Another concept that I borrowed uh, as a participant of the uh, European uh, frame programs, uh, called NACRI. Um, Tsagi was involved uh, in this project. It's a, again a very revolutionary configuration with engines mounted on upper surface of the tail uh, part of the um, aircraft uh, with extra shielding due to uh, vertical uh, tails in this part. You see it's uh, giving like a uh, good screen for the engines. And uh, the wing with the uh, forward swept, uh, uh, forward, uh, forward swept, that uh, can be done at certain conditions, uh, can be can be a laminar wing. So all this together can provide a very good uh, noise uh, shielding and uh, decreasing in noise and reduction in fluid con f flu fuel consumption. So another configuration, again, quite similar to previous one, 
just uh, using uh, open rotor engine. We, we did a lot of research uh, in our air propulsion aerodynamics department. By the way, the director of this uh, department is sitting on the first row <laughs> and he will make presentation, I think, a bit later <laughs> about different things. <laughs> More hypersonics, I think. <laughs> But in this department, we um, did uh, uh, perform this testing of the open rotor engine with the flow in the wind tunnel. So we studied uh, what uh, can we, what advantages uh, we can get in terms of fluid, 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 fuel consumption. Uh, and uh, this concept looks really promising, particularly for the not very high speed, uh, maybe 0.72, 0.74. Um, uh, civil aircraft. But the uh, extra problem that we get through this engine is uh, uh, some uh, extra noise. So integration is something that is really can uh, be a solution for the for open rotor engine application in the, uh, in the civil aircraft. Um, another area where uh, aviation sci science is uh, um, working hard is uh, decreasing the drag and particularly friction drag. Th this is uh, probably the, the, the only untouched area that is uh, waiting for all of you, you know, scientists and engineers in order to find some solutions. So today we fly mostly uh, turbulent aircraft and you know the turbulent friction is uh, five, six times higher than laminar friction, laminar boundary lay friction. So uh, to make uh, aircraft laminar or particularly wing laminar is a really big um, saving in terms of fuel, I mean drag, friction drag. <coughs> and um, um, there are many approaches uh, we can uh, uh, study in order to decrease uh, uh, friction drag. And I'll tell just about a few of them. Uh, first of all, uh, um, oh actually in the previous picture you see uh, the induced drag, induced drag, the red color, that is almost, uh, how to say, uh, this issue is almost addressed uh, by uh, uh, today's technologies. So, I mean, there was uh, just historical, I'll just uh, remind you that uh, about 20 or 30, 30 years ago, I think, there was introduction so-called supercritical airfoils that allowed to shift uh, a wave crisis uh, for uh, 100 kilometers per hour. So making flatter, more flat uh, upper surface, we can move uh, uh, the wave crisis, I mean the shock wave and the supersonic uh, area and typically uh, uh, associated with the separation after the shock. Uh, towards uh, uh, trailing edge of the, of the wing. So it gave a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, improvement in the uh, wing aerodynamics and actually increased uh, a cruise uh, speed of, uh, of flight of 400 plus kilometers per hour. So we are studying uh, today um, uh, laminarization, so laminar flow control, uh, and again, between the fully turbulent and fully laminar, there is big, big difference in the, the field where we try to uh, get in. So laminar laminarization due to uh, natural laminarization due to favorable um, pressure gradient and special airfoil design, uh, artificial due to suction or combination uh, so-called hybrid, both suction and natural, uh, natu natural uh, laminarization is uh, something that uh, we are considering today and uh, other colleagues uh, around the world. So we uh, checked uh, some other uh, possibilities to flow control, uh, particularly this one um, uh, in order to uh, uh, decrease uh, the separation area in this and trading um, edge uh, area. So there is a perforated uh, uh, part of the wing where we generate some very weak um, blowing away, I mean, out of, of, the, of the wing. So it, uh, it shifts, uh, uh, it is shifting um, the 
separation area and the shock area uh, towards uh, further towards uh, trading edge and uh, provide uh, better characteristics, uh, particularly uh, in um, high angle of attack. I mean, after five degrees, six degrees, seven degrees angle of attack. So it's important area. It's particularly uh, mostly uh, for most aircraft. It's uh, cruise uh, flight control area. So in particularly making um, favorable uh, pressure gradient, we can laminar. Uh, we can make laminar boundary lay along most of part of the wing. So another quite uh, low technology readiness level technology is. Uh, to use uh, plasma generators on the leading edge in order to address uh, <coughs> cross-flow instabilities uh, uh, on their leading edge uh, for the swept wings. Again, it's under uh, research right now, basic research, and uh, uh, we hope to uh, shift to high technology readiness level um, area so we can uh, try with uh, um, bigger scale experiments and even maybe flight experiments. Another revolutionary idea, uh, kind of challenge for the future aviation is to introduce uh, different shapes, different configurations, so-called blended wing body among them. So it's not just tube and wings and engine mounted on the wing, but it's completely different. Um, uh, Using such configuration, we can increase uh, lift to drag ratio, I mean, essentially, I mean, 20% or even more. And here is uh, some uh, results of current uh, SAGI work with uh, our colleagues uh, in US, uh, Boeing and uh, Airbus in Europe. I mean, uh, concerning different approaches, how to mount engines and uh, what the shapes and uh, it's more blended or less blended, so it looks um, close to traditional or completely uh, revolutionary, like this picture uh, here. Among other new ideas, we are talking about challenges today. I'd like to mention about uh, uh, new area of research and development uh, for the supersonic uh, business jet. Uh, there was a uh, first generation superjet, uh, uh, supersonic uh, jets, uh, like Concorde and Tupoli 144 supersonic jet, and some early designs by Sukhoi S21, S51. And the current uh, work of uh, several organizations around uh, the world, uh, I would mention uh, Lockheed Design and Boeing and uh, Dassault Aviation. And uh, here you can see the uh, joint uh, Tsagi uh, Dassault. Uh, Aleni concept uh, for the supersonic jet that is uh, good uh, for the environment, meaning that it has very low sonic boom, uh, very low noise, and still quite high uh, aerodynamic performance. So that's of course future, but uh, I think the future will start uh, with the um, uh, introduction of uh, supersonic business jet for small uh, capacity, maybe eight, 12 passengers only. And um, it's just example for the sonic boom for this aircraft with the weight about 50 tons is about 15 Pascal. And if you look at the first generation supersonic jets like Concorde or Tupolev, they had almost 10 times higher sonic boom. So you see the progress we made uh, in terms of uh, technologies and optimization and dynamic optimization so it's really big progress another area where we can expect uh, some um, um, advances and some improvement is of course uh, structural uh, new structural concepts and composites today of course uh, uh, some new uh, area very important area we can get uh, new quality uh, and uh, it's a very vast area related to new material development and uh, design of this material, manufacture and testing. So this is one of the uh, advanced concepts uh, that is uh, today 
uh, is under research uh, in um, uh, seventh uh, frame program. Atsagi actually initiated this project uh, together with uh, German Research Center DLR. And uh, you see it's uh, not a black metal approach. It's completely uh, composite structural, how to say, geodesic uh, type of structure that gives a lot of ad advances um, and uh, gives real weight saving. And weight saving is uh, very high. It's uh, between 25 and 40 percent. And uh, this is today's uh, it's existing technology, actually. In Russia, we apply it to build uh, big-scale uh, uh, bodies for the strategic missiles. So it's actually like textile technology. But uh, the result uh, is very impressive. The strength and structure of this uh, body is, is really high. Uh, and uh, the idea was to use it not just for single use when the missile launched, but for multi-use. And uh, for that, of course, we need to do a lot of research, how good it is during operations and uh, humidity impact, climate, um, uh, multi-cycle loading and, uh, uh, and other aspects. It's a really promising area for research. And it's very easy for this approach to make a real optim optimal structure. So we can distribute the strength of this uh, body along their axis uh, very optimal way. So it opens really new door and new opportunities for, um, for the engineers to get all advances that uh, composites can, uh, uh, can give. Not today's approach when we make a composite structure. And the weight of the structure is almost like metal. And the reason why, because uh, the black metal concept is not always good, and particularly not good for the composites. That's some current uh, work of Tsagi in our testing lab, uh, compo full-scale composite testing. This is uh, wing, uh, composite wing prototype testing for the MS-21 and uh, the rig uh, for the uh, fatigue testing also. And uh, various type of testing. Here is uh, vibration testing of uh, full-scale uh, full uh, um, wing prototype. And at the end, just a minute, I will take, uh, talk about, uh, I mean, just mention about uh, very broad uh, international cooperation that SAG is involved today. So we are quite deep, deeply involved in um, frame programs in Europe together with our colleagues outside of Russia. And of course, uh, enjoying, always enjoying uh, work together with our Indian uh, colleagues here. And I think it's symbolical that uh, I would say the director of our sister organization, NAL, National Aerospace Lab, just talked <laughs> before me. So it's uh, something, uh, I think, symbolical. So we, we should uh, strengthen our cooperation, <laughs> Shyam. So I'd like to invite you for the next uh, Moscow International Air Show that will be August uh, 27 through 1st of September 2013. It's really a really remarkable event. A lot of things that she um, talked about, uh, this high maneuverability you will see in our sky, the Cobra maneuvers, all this imaging thrust vectoring stuff. First time they always uh, was shown in Russia, so during our Russian, uh, no, international air show. So I, I would invite you to come and see these wonderful things. And besides, I'd like to mention that uh, we will host a very important international event in St. Petersburg 2014. It's International Council for Aerospace Sciences uh, Symposium. It will take uh, September 7th uh, through 10th uh, in St. Petersburg. So it's a major scientific event and we would uh, invite you to join this uh, conference and come to St. Petersburg also in, in the year 2014. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sechi. It was a very enlightening uh, talk, especially related to the transport aircrafts, where the challenges are basically the design of the aircraft for drag minimization. Uh, I request the audience, please. Hello, audience, please. It's not uh, good to disturb the system with the, okay, just please. So it was a very <coughs> interesting talk. Uh, where the very important challenges of any transport aircraft in terms of the wing body blending 
the human airframe integration and the structural uh, efficiency of that, especially the laminar flows, etc. I think for anybody who is involved in the transport aircraft, uh, would uh, really appreciate the points which uh, Dr. Sergi has exposed to us. Thank you very much. And few questions before we uh, close the session on this particular uh, topic of uh, basic challenges of aviation sciences in 21st century. Some questions, please. I just wanted to know, now that you are able to reduce the sonic boom by a large extent, is it entirely aerodynamic or do you use some current flow through the thing, something like plasma creation to... No, no nothing exotic. Okay. It's uh, just better optimization. So it's shaping... It's actually uh, using 100% of the area rule, so distributing the volumes of the aircraft. And the fuselage, when it curves, the wing have some V angle. Um, the engine mounted in the very tail part and uh, on the upper surface. So a lot of small things uh, putting together gave such big results. And thank you that you noticed it. <laughs> <laughs> No, because uh, some other agencies are talking about some exotic solutions to reduce um, the wing yeah, boom. I know, yeah, yeah. know about it, but it's probably next. I mean, the I think this is a typical Russian solution to a yeah, problem. <laughs> energy source and everything. Yeah. So that's uh, within our traditional approach. Thank Just uh, one more. Sir, I am Govindan Kuti from uh, National Aerospace Laboratories. Sir, you said something about this fuselage, composite fuselage. And uh, we can have the cost saving of about 30 to 35 percentage. In which way that you are telling, sir, whether you are telling uh, the cost of material or the assembly time or... Uh... Yes, uh, I can tell you about the assembling time for the military application. So it's really... Uh, impressive facility and they have like textile um, um, I have problem to explain it but uh, it's really big scale uh, rotation device with their uh, lining how to say uh, filament winding or telling hmm? filament winding uh, it's um, uh, it's um, kind of like textile you know so it's uh, one fiber that um, make uh, makes uh, how to say that rotating around the axis and making the shell rotating I mean a circular shape it takes not long it takes maybe I don't know maybe uh, a few days in order to make uh, one uh, body but um, uh, today we are on the research stage stage for the civil application this technology was introduced uh, several decades ago for the military applications for their strategic missiles, big scale, it's uh, diame with diameter maybe four meters or so, uh, but today we apply it for fuselage and um, uh, we manufactured uh, the section of such fuselage uh, with a length of maybe six meters and uh, three meters diameter as a, a research prototype and uh, uh, 2013 this year particularly we will um, study uh, in real, uh, how to say, uh, testing conditions, uh, it's f big scale uh, prototype, uh, the behavior of such a, <laughs> of such section. So various uh, loading um, cycles, uh, and static strength. Um, uh, of course, uh, at the same time, simultaneously we do some calculation. It's not only finite element uh, method, but some uh, more advanced tools because we need to study real physics how to, it works. But as of today, you know, it's really have a lot of uh, it has a lot of advantages. And uh, again, I mean, um, today's um, composite structures with black metal, when you have stringer um, uh, frame and uh, skin. Um, the weight of such structures is quite uh, high and the reason is uh, first we don't know exactly how the structure behaves um, during long service uh, we are talking about uh, high load um, structures it's not 
uh, ailerons or flaps, laps, uh, or tails. It's uh, really s um, high um, load structures. Um, climate uh, exposure of the shocks, and because we don't know exactly how it, uh, how the strength is uh, degrading, we put more, I would say, uh, uh, meat or more materials there. So it's quite thick uh, and heavy. And uh, in order to get um, uh, advantages of what composites actually uh, promising, the, the uh, geodesic structures looks like uh, the best approach. But again, again it's uh, today's uh, idea, quite a high level technology readiness, I would say level maybe three or close to four, but we still need to do some research in order to introduce it for next generation uh, aircraft. Thank you. I think uh, we can we talk more about it. If you like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we close the session. More interactions can be had across city. Thank you very much, Dr. Sir.